Welcome everyone to our webinar on DASA experience management for high performance digital organizations, a product suite. Uh, I once read somewhere, do not deliver products, deliver experience. So here we are talking to you about it and how DASA can help design and deliver experience. To talk about this important topic, I have Rick, Dave, and Rob with me. Dave is an experienced independent change consultant specializing in agile and DevOps transformations, um, effective strategy deployment, portfolio and product management, and modern working methods. Dave's mission is to enable organizations become a better version of themselves. He has advised, trained, and coached clients such as Heineken, Bosch, Philips, Emirates, Rabobank, to name a few. Dave has been involved with DASA for several years as a strategic advisor, key contributor, and a lead author. We are very happy to have him with us today. Rob is an L&D expert. He has more than 20 years of, ex of experience in training, design, development, delivery, and evaluation. He also manages global training teams, conducts TTTs, and builds communities of subject matter experts. He is currently focused on training the IT industry on designing and delivering experiences. Rick is the CEO of DASA. His passion to enable organizations become high performance digital organization shows in everything he does in his guidance and shaping the DASA portfolio as well. But before we hear them about this product suite, um, some housekeeping items first. The recordings will be made available to everyone who, regist who has registered for this event. Uh, please use the comment section to ask your questions during this session. We will answer all your questions after the speakers have after the sp uh, speakers come finish talking to you. And if you have any additional questions, please send it to the email ID shown on the screen, or you can also visit our website for more information. I will now hand it over to Rick to tell us about why experience management is such an important part of the DASA portfolio. Yes. To you. Uh, thanks, Pragya, for the intro. Uh, and before I dive into experience management and, and its importance, allow me to set the stage by giving you an update on what DASA is doing and, and most importantly, why. Uh, our mission, as you can see here on the slide, is to become a partner, be a partner, a go-to partner even for enterprises who'd like to become a high performance digital organization. We've learned over the more than eight years since we exist as DASA that this is not an easy feat to achieve. It involves a lot of investments from a people, process, technology dimension. Often it is related to culture, to leadership. It's basically about connecting the dots. Uh, and we try to be as relevant as we can be as industry body uh, as a partner to build tangible solutions, uh, powerful talent solutions, guidance solutions, and to invest in a global community to help organizations to tap into this huge body of knowledge, apply the know-how in their context, and learn from each other. That's our mission. And on the next slide, uh, you can see that this actually starts to become a reality more and more. But this is just a snapshot of organizations that work with us, so I'm very proud about those names and labels, most of them probably familiar to you, and there are many more. We have uh, also lots of partners uh, in industry, both training partners, transformation partners, who also help to positively infect leaders, professionals, and enterprises uh, with all the body of knowledge that we build. And we try to put it in writing, we organize lots of events, uh, we invest in our communities, our ambassadors, etc. And this makes us, uh, I think, a quite um, approachable and also fun uh, global community to work with. That's what we get back often. Uh, and I'm happy to see you all in this, uh, this webinar to learn a little bit more on what we do and what we have created, especially the product suite that is in the center of today's attention. Before we dive into that product suite, on the next slide, you see our philosophy behind building uh, our products. We want to become a relevant partner, as I said, and to do that, you need to understand how a typical enterprise operates and how enterprise leaders are continuously looking in this FUCA world we live in 
to improve, to basically be a more resilient, more responsive digital enterprise. Some are really at the early stage of their journey, others are well underway. A typical transformation goes through various phases, as you will see here. And what we do is taking those uh, stages as a starting point to design our products to make sure that we can provide as many positive touch points in throughout that journey so that we can be a relevant ally for enterprise leaders in their transformation journeys. And on the next slide, you see another key ingredient for our portfolio vision, <coughs> which is not, <coughs> apologies, not so much the, the transformation phases, but more the themes that are typically important to focus on. We believe it's not a prescriptive um, silver bullet kind of route that you should take. But sooner or later, you're bound to invest in not just your technology landscape and automate your software delivery processes, building strong end-to-end -end responsible teams, but you also have to deal with all kinds of other things. First and foremost, the leadership style, the way you ingrain the right type of culture, attitude, behavior in your organization, so that autonomy, but also entrepreneurship, innovation are stimulated. And in the end, you do it for business drivers that generate flow, but most importantly, value. You want to generate tangible value for your customers and your other stakeholders. And based on these themes, we try to build a comprehensive portfolio that is as relevant as possible for all kinds of enterprises. On the next slide, we have a depiction of that portfolio as it is shaping up this, uh, this last few months. I will not go over all the individual products. If you want to know more, look at the DASA website, contact us. Um, or get involved in, in one of the communities we have around those product uh, suites. But it's important to emphasize on the left part of this slide, what are the key principles? I already talked about the transformation themes and also the phases, but it's also good to know that we are, as an industry body, framework inclusive, as we call it. We are not focusing on one specific method, tool, technology, or framework. We understand the leading frameworks that are around. We also know the pros and cons, the do's and don'ts, and try to help organizations navigate through them, maybe by combining them or becoming a little bit less reliant on them, mapping all the key concepts and principles in a way that is needed, but also more valuable to them. And our product suites, and that's the most important part here, are as messy as possible. That stands for mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. We design our product suites in such a way that we have all that it takes to not only inspire people and build their knowledge and skills, for example, through training products, certification programs, but also we have lots of guidance products that can be a workshop, an assessment, a playbook, a tutorial, a business simulation, etc., that can be used to tailor the concepts in your organization context. So that allows you to apply the concepts in a meaningful way uh, in addition to being inspired in a classroom setting and the combination of guidance and talent solutions have been proven to be very effective in guiding organizations to a higher level of performance and maturity well these themes that are listed here in, in small fonts cover all the various aspects that you sooner or later need to invest in and when i reflect on what enterprise leaders have been doing over the past decades, uh, then I see many of them successfully making steps in the right direction in terms of uh, their ways of working, sometimes helped by adopting one or multiple frameworks or methods, uh, ingraining agile, lean, DevOps practices and principles. And some of them also successfully improved, let's say their technology state and moving, for example, to a cloud infrastructure. But what most of them struggle with, however, uh, even though they invested quite a bit in those things, is to actually report improvements in various uh, business outcomes. And what they report back to me and others is that they have difficulty in deciding what kind of investments are most valuable, how to prioritize, how to make best use of the scarce resources and capabilities. Um, in other words, maximizing for value is, although nobody would disagree that this is crucial and almost trivial to focus on it's actually a difficult thing to do maybe especially in organizations that have adopted new ways of new ways of working and that's also the, the the highlighted area in our portfolio diagram here and on the next slide we zoom in on this more 
because this uh, prompted us to invest more specifically on uh, capabilities that we believe are crucial to maximize value from your digital products, which is very important for the various uh, software teams, uh, agile DevOps product teams you have in your organization that uh, would like to uh, create as much impact as they can. And then you touch upon the, the disciplines of product management, portfolio management, and experience management. Portfolio management, which we, by the way, had a great webinar on a few days ago, uh, highlights uh, or, or helps you to determine what are the right digital products that you should create in the first place. Product management, of which we have introduced a product suite earlier this spring, um, and that resonates quite well in the market as well, focuses on, from a life cycle perspective, from cradle to grave, on everything you should do to, the, to deliver those digital products in the right way. Last but not least, if you really want to complete the, the capability perspective, you also need to make sure that those products actually deliver the right delight, experience, satisfaction to your customers and stakeholders. And that is the realm of experience management. And that's why I'm so proud that we also today can showcase our newly designed product suite on that specific topic. Let's dive in a little bit more. On the next slide, uh, for starters, uh, what is actually experience management? Well, experiences are basically a collection of memories. Uh, so we all interact with things or people, and it leads to some kind of uh, triggers, but also some uh, emotions, some feelings, some sentiments you have. And an experience is basically a collection of various um, uh, um, interactions you have had over time with, for example, uh, someone, but it can also definitely be a product, for example, an IT product. We all can think of all kinds of uh, examples. For example, if you would book your train ticket or airline ticket through a website or an app, you would have a certain experience uh, that you have. Or in a more corporate context, if you would uh, use the, the app from the, the finance department to uh, hand in your uh, expense uh, statements, you would also have an experience. In my personal experience, that one is a little bit less positive on average. Apparently, the industry still fails to build uh, very easy to use apps for that thing. But you can all imagine what experiences are. And it's very important to design your digital products in such a way that it optimizes for the right experience, and that you also, as an organization, analyze and improve on those experiences by reaching the right sentiment. And this is basically the, the discipline that experience management is focusing on. And on the next slide, we see that it's also, in a way, hard, because the nature of experience is that it's very personal. It's very individually oriented. As the picture, the, as the visualization depicts here, uh, it depends on your worldview, the context, which pers perspective you have in mind. And we all, I always say, especially when I have arguments with my kids or my wife, uh, perception is reality. We can debate a lot, uh, but there's a, uh, it's basically both true, my opinion, and that one of the person I'm arguing with, and then you have to find another solution. This highlights. Uh, how important, but also how difficult it is to measure sentiment. And that is, uh, uh, but it is very important to do this right. And we can see uh, on the next slide, based on a few examples, why this is such an important thing. In a, from a corporate perspective, if you look at successful and less successful organizations from an experience standpoint, we all know the example of Netflix. Um, they did quite a few things right over the past uh, years to end up with, as you see here, huge amount of revenue based on the delight and the positive experience over time they deliver with all their shows and movies on their platform. Uh, Slack, similar example, probably familiar to many of you, basically revolutionized uh, the field of software for team building, collaboration, and communication by providing a easy to use, fun interface platform that allowed you to quickly connect with each other. On the other end of the aisle, you see examples where 
organizations can also sometimes screw up. Uh, Facebook had this uh, privacy breach with the Cambridge Analytical uh, uh, situation. Uh, and of course, Boeing uh, was in recent years in, in tough uh, waters because of their uh, problems with the 737 MAX airplanes. And this can definitely hamper the brand experience of a company. Uh, and in the end, yeah, you have all kinds of different experiences, as, as you will see. Uh, in the end, you, it's about also the brand experience for a company that, uh, that is most important. Um, but if you nail it, if you do this right, as we see on the next slide, uh, it can bring you a lot of advantages. Some of them are financially related. Uh, you can imagine that uh, you can have increased revenue, margins, etc. Um, but also non-financial ones. For example, the loyalty of your customers and employees or the productivity of your users can greatly be increased if you improve your experience. And that's why it's such an important thing that organizations should look at, teams uh, could look for what can we do to improve the experience of our products. On the next slide, we see uh, how uh, the impact in an organization uh, from a perspective of experience is. It's not just your customers, for example. Most people would think of customer experience first when you think of experience management, and it's a very important one, especially for the software product teams that build digital products for, for end users and customers. So um, user experience, uh, uh, customer experience are typically measured by those organizations. Um, but you also have your employees. Uh, employee experience is equally valuable to take into account, not just for the retention perspective, which is very relevant in the IT domain because of the war on talent we face. If you treat your employees wrong, if you don't create the right experience over time for them, it might be very easy for them to find a job elsewhere and uh, you have uh, a lot of problems then. But also for acquiring new talent. Uh, if you do things well and it starts already with the onboarding experience, you can ask any HR or recruitment officer and they will tell you how important it is to deliver the right experience from the first moment that person starts interacting with your brand. But in a similar vein, you have vendors, investors, partners who also have a specific experience related to your organization. Well, these are just a few examples of typical stakeholders that uh, are impacted by experience management. So we now know how important it is. Uh, unfortunately, it is not so easy as we see on the next slide, uh, because we have found based on a lot of research and by talking to the fault leaders, but also to enterprise leaders on what keeps them awake at night, what, is, what are they doing around this, this capability, we found five typical challenges in creating a positive impact with experience management. Um, they're listed here. It's partly related to understanding how important it is, and that's why we put so much emphasis in this talk on it. It's partly about the lack of skills to actually integrate experience management uh, in your product design and in your way of working. Uh, it's also partly uh, the mindset, a lack of cultural mindset to adopt it as a basically a new way of thinking, adopting new measurements, uh, trying to work differently to, to make it a first class citizen, citizen in everything you do. Uh, and last but not least, if you don't have the right metrics to measure, it is also very hard and intangible thing to capture. And uh, then it is also hard to improve. So basically these, these challenges in summary focus on specific elements. I would say it is a combination of mindset, skill set, and tool set that is at play here. Well, based on these uh, challenges, uh, we have created a product suite. And we'll go to that section right now, um, because I'm very proud that we can announce to the world what we have been designing and actually are developing at the moment. And we don't do that alone, uh, as that's how we often team up with thought leaders and subject matter experts worldwide. And specifically for this product suite, I'm proud to announce that we co-develop it with the organization X-Labs, which is a trailblazer in the field of XLA, uh, the experience level agreements, uh, initiated by a team of experienced entrepreneurs, including the founding father of XLA, Marco Giannotta. So great to work with them. And uh, I'm quite confident that it will lead to impactful solutions and products for you all. The product architects, Dave and uh, Rob were already introduced by Prakya, but Marco, as I said, 
is also involved and uh, Jette who, van Eldijk, a colleague of X-Labs, uh, brings a lot of expertise and knowledge to the table as well. With that being said, uh, I give the floor and the mic to Dave now to bring us a bit more up to speed on what the product suite actually looks like. Dave? Over to yeah, you. thanks, Rick. Yeah. And it, this is indeed a great team to be part of. So uh, I'm also very happy to, uh, to engage in, in a very productive collaboration. Uh, and what we've done until now is actually create uh, two, uh, two, very, uh, two very important parts of the product suite, uh, which you may be familiar with if you've already seen the portfolio and product management suites which actually constitutes of two major elements. And the one element you see here uh, is the two-day certification program. And that is essential to build up knowledge and skills um, and actually know how it's done. How do you do experience management, uh, learning the basics and how to apply it in practice. So that is a fundamental part of, of the whole suite. But the other part is you know, evenly important because if you are at this moment you know, engaged in a transformation or improvement of your organization, uh, you want to improve your way of working, you want to start working with experience management, uh, and you want to actually use practical instruments, practical guidance and products uh, that are on the shelf uh, and apply it you know, on, um, uh, on a daily basis. And this is absolutely a very valuable item. So this value box, it, it contains a number of products, in this case, six. Uh, and those are real transformation uh, enablers. And uh, Rob, uh, in, a, in a few minutes, will dive into the specifics of this, uh, of this value box, uh, containing workshops, guidance papers, playbooks, etc. So it's very, very interesting to have a look at. On the next slide, um, uh, we see the first part, which is actually the certification program. And if we dive into this a bit deeper on the next one, we see that um, uh, first we need to realize, you know, what is our audience? And the audience is quite a broad audience. So it's not only people who deal with experience uh, on a daily basis, being a CX or UX professional or designer. Of course, if you are a customer experience professional, uh, if you're an expert in UX, uh, th this is a very you know, interesting framework to have a look at and, and you know, also to broaden your perspective. But also if you're you know, on a daily basis involved in product management, if you're a product owner or product leader, if you uh, are a product developer, so you're, you're a team member, you know, whether you're in a product team or in a platform team, uh, and also, if you're in a sporting function, for instance, in finance, or actually helping teams to progress and to professionalize and to adapt and adopt modern ways of working, being a coach, an agile or DevOps coach, uh, or if you're you know, part of a leadership team, in all of those cases, this can be a very interesting um, uh, product to have a look at because it will help you to actually understand experience management in all its facets. If you go to the next slide, we see uh, what the basic uh, goals are of the two-day certification program. Uh, first, of course, we all need to understand what are the basics and why is experience management so relevant? Um, of course, also, what are the basic principles behind this? And uh, based on those principles, how can we actually understand the user and the customer, you know, in the right way in order to design the right experience for that same user or, um, uh, or customer. And, you know, it's really important to understand that the user is not only the external user being a customer or, you know, the, the, the end user, the client of the organization. It can also be an internal user. It can also be your coworker or employee. And so it can be a lot of people who actually you know, are dealing with uh, a certain experience in this, in this aspect. So it will include also you know, different perspectives like developer experience, user experience, customer experience, and, and, and diving deeper into the actual uh, experience, how to design it, but also how to measure the actual experience that you have delivered. And so when you have delivered a new product increment to your customers, when you have delivered a service, what is the actual experience that they actually um, uh, you know, have, have evaluated? 
Uh, and uh, last but not least, it, it is very practical as well. So it's not only about measuring experience and being able to call out, you know, the, the different definitions, etc. It's also about applying it in daily operations. So the next slide actually is more about uh, the structure of the program. And this is actually all of the objectives, but then in chronological order. So we start with the basics. Then we actually discern, you know, the user needs and requirements being uh, the journey that they engage in. How do you actually create an experience out of this? And how do you make it a seamless experience when you're dealing with, for instance, organizational silos that you have to cross? So how can you actually go beyond those silos in the organization, beyond those different teams and create a seamless experience for the, for the user that you're developing and delivering the services and products to. So this is the buildup of the, of the whole uh, program. On the next slide, you also see that it is followed by an exam. Um, so there's multiple ways to actually follow the program. It can be I know, a, a facilitated classroom training or a virtual one. Uh, it's a two day program, uh, which ends with an exam. Uh, and of course, if you want to be a trainer, um, so if you will do the trainer trainer, um, you need to have a higher score than the learners themselves, which you know speaks for itself. Yeah, so on the next slide, um, uh, it's it's the result. So what do you have? What do you what do you actually uh, have, have? What have you got? What have you improved when you have left this program? Uh, this two-day uh, two-day certification program. It is that you will be able to uh, to execute you know your experience management initiatives in a better way. So you know how to actually call out experience management. What are the different facets? How to apply it in daily life and how to create the ultimate user experience. So it does not only help you to understand it, it also helps you to actually you know, create better products. And for instance, how to frustrate uh, or detect frustrations from your users who you're delivering it to. Um, how to eliminate silos and of course, how to adopt the right mindset because experience management is not only, you know, um, a, a collection of a number of practices, it is also a mindset and a way of thinking and a way of behavior. So that's also part of the program uh, where you will be able to actually, you know, learn, uh, but also apply it in practice. That's, that's what I wanted to share about this part. So I'll hand it over to Rob to have a look at the value box. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, so the, the, the value box um, um, it consists of uh, six um, 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 tools, if you like. Um, the purpose of the uh, experience management value box is to set up an experience management office. Uh, we also call this uh, an XMO. And we also want to create uh, the right mindset, skill set and tool set, as we said. And this not just with the XMO people, but actually with everyone who can influence uh, user experience. So it doesn't really matter what role you have, um, whether you are on the leadership team or whether you are a, a DevOps coach or a product owner or a developer. Uh, if your work can have an impact on user experience, then the value box is there for you to deliver products that better meet the user needs and expectations. So what does that mean? Um, we need to have an essential level of empathy for the users of our products. And uh, you also need to have insights into the current state of experience management in your organization. And we will provide practical instruments in order to kickstart experience management for you. Um, a holistic approach also to implement experience management is needed since that helps uh, organizations address several challenges such as uh, fragmented experiences, maybe limited visibility, maybe inefficient processes, lack of alignment, and even resistance to change. So in the next slide, you will see the objective uh, of experience management value box, and that is to equip you with the knowledge, mindset, and tools needed to design and deliver the right user experiences. And again, that's um, giving them what they need and what they expect. And the outcome we want to achieve is to cultivate a team um, capable of creating positive change through a holistic approach to experience management. 
So in the, in the next slide, you'll find the experience management value box. We have included six uh, guidance products um, to this box, and they are uh, an experience management assessment, uh, drama day, perfect day, uh, out the box playbook, the XMO guidance paper, and we will have experience behavior and key proudness indicator workshops. Uh, we're now going to discuss them in a bit more detail in the next six slides. So in the next one, you'll find the experience management assessment. That's an essential uh, diagnostic tool for evaluating an organization's current capabilities and readiness to adopt and execute experience management. It's been developed by industry experts to provide you with an accurate assessment of your organization. It'll pinpoint areas of excellence and also shows areas where there's room for improvement. It enables you to create a roadmap that steers you in the right direction to implement experience management, and it guides you in delivering experiences that are aligned to user needs and expectations. The next one is Drama Day Perfect Day. So this facilitated simulation is designed to help your organization anticipate and navigate the complexities when launching a new product. Um, it delves deeper into the user experience and prepares you for the unexpected user behavior. So we will design a drama day scenario by imagining everything that could go wrong and assess the impact of these issues on user experiences and the overall lack of success. Um, we will also design the perfect day by imagining a scenario where the launch is a resounding success. So for that, we will identify key factors that contribute to this ideal outcome, and we will determine um, how they enhance user experiences. So these insights uh, help to create an implementation plan with actions so we can launch a product that meets user needs and expectations. The next one will be the out-of-box playbook on the slide. So that introduces a transformational approach that goes beyond timelines and budgets to ensure user needs and expectations are met. Because when we deliver a new release or another user impacting change, just being on time and on budget doesn't mean that the end user will be happy and more productive. Uh, we can only celebrate success when all three boxes are checked. So that's on time, on budget and on experience. So this comprehensive guide provides real world examples and solutions so you can make changes that impact users with empathy and effectiveness. And you can think of engaging with real users to gather insights directly from them before and after implementing those changes. And you could also personalize personas by renaming them after real users to remind your colleagues and yourself that they are impacting real people, not just archetypes. And we will use tools such as the empathy canvas map and fishbowl techniques for in-person user interviews to gain deeper insights. So on the next slide, you'll find the XMO guidance paper. Um, an experience management office is a permanent function of an organization that embraces and practices experience management. Uh, its goal is to continuously improve experience and collaboration so it can increase business impact for all parties involved, both inside and outside the organization. And the XMO guidance paper is a comprehensive resource uh, designed to equip organizations with the tools necessary to effectively implement and measure your experience management initiatives. And some of the components are um, how will you achieve the needed mindset shift to be able to design the right experience, um, the guidance paper will encompass comprehensive matrices, which includes uh, things like how to create effective experience indicators to measure, uh, how to create useful performance dashboards, and what templates to use when developing a detailed action plan on experience matrices. So we also provide tools for documenting and understanding user emotions and user journeys. We provide templates for creating uh, the personalizing personas. And last, we will provide guidelines for establishing governance structures to oversee and embed user experience initiatives in your organization. On the next slide is the Experience Behavior Workshop. It's an immersive and interactive session designed to define and cultivate behaviors to align the user experience with the user needs. So it 
also aligned your team's actions with your organization's uh, core values and goals. And it ensures that every interaction, both internal and external, um, contributes to a positive and consistent experience. And some of the aspects are to adopt the viewpoint of users so you can better understand their needs, pain points, and expectations, uh, identify the key roles that mostly influence user experience, uh, define the behaviors. These roles must demonstrate in order to deliver the desired experience. So as a pre-desired experience we will um, uh, come up with, we will assign ownership for each of these behaviors for accountability and for follow through and create a plan for monitoring and reinforcing uh, positive behaviors. So next slide, we have then arrived at our sixth and final guidance products of the uh, experience management value box. Carrot and sticks, um, they are extrinsic extrinsic uh, motivators to drive people. You can think of uh, penalties and bonuses, but also of uh, reprimands and promotions. However, the best way to motivate people is when they encourage themselves. So intrinsic motivation is a gift that keeps giving. It makes us proud and it bonds. So the P and KPI should stand for proudness and not performance. So the key proudness indicator workshop is a dynamic mental exercise designed to help teams define lean and meaningful metrics that foster collaboration and drive the desired outcome for your business, for your employees, for your customers, or even uh, the supply chain. So this workshop uh, shifts the focus from traditional performance metrics to those that generate intrinsic motivation, cultivating a sense of pride and unity among team members. So it moves beyond extrinsic, extrinsic uh, motivators like bonuses and penalties. It encourages self-motivation by fostering a sense of accomplishment. It identifies areas that currently cause uh, shame or dissatisfaction. Um, participants will also quietly reflect on what aspects of the business makes them or others uh, feel proud. Uh, and then we select the most impactful proudness indicators and develop compelling names for each of them. For each uh, of them, and then finally, uh, we define some actionable steps for when the workshop concludes. So this sums up the six uh, guidance products that make up the experience management value box. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks so much for that. Um... So all the products that you heard about from Rob and Dave uh, will be hosted on our platform, the Dasa Hub. Uh, Dasa Hub has a large course library, which is driven by Dasa Competency Framework. And it facilitates classroom, virtual classroom, and self-paced learning. Uh, on completing the learnings, the learners will also earn a badge, a digital badge, via this platform. You can also deliver workshops using this platform. Uh, it gives the flexibility to edit and contextualize the workshops as per your context, and you can do multiple contextualized deliveries. Similarly, organizational assessments can are also done via Dasa Hub, and it can be done for thousands of users. It provides you with all the features of running multiple organizational assessments for the different and for the same organizations as well. So you can do it like after, after some time uh, so that you can also measure and see how over a period of time the organization has been performing on the same context, on the same metrics that you had evaluated them earlier on. Um, also, a comparison can be done between, the, uh, between different organizations in the same industry or industrial com uh, between industries, etc. Um, DASA Hub also provides transformation objectives, the dashboards that I was just talking about, uh, objective dashboards that will help goal setting and tracking. Um, very soon, DASA communities will also be hosted on DASA Hub, and there are many other exciting features coming up, such as co-pilot, transformation, central hub features, as well as user management, Create you can create your, you'll be able to create your own personal library, content library, et cetera. Um, next, let's uh, talk about um, uh, how you can use the, these products that are hosted on Dasa Hub. To deliver the value box, you need to attend the 
train the facilitator sessions and to become an accredited training for the certification programs, you need to attend the train the trainer sessions. These sessions are conducted by our master facilitators and trainers. And uh, you can attend a virtual live session of these uh, 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 of the TTFs or the TTTs, or you can also attend a flex session. You can opt for a flex session. Flex sessions are typically a self-paced ones, which you can do at your own time, own pace. Um, and of course, there are special pricing for the first cohorts of the TTTs and the TTFs. Uh, talking about the pricing, let's let's look at a commercial model now. Uh, on the next, so we have our per user pricing model. Uh, we have special volume pricing and separate regional pricing for value boxes. Uh, the pricing includes user licenses to deliver the products, the digital badge, and access to the updated materials. We quarterly update the materials. The value box pricing also gives you access to the value box community and that to interact with that community and with other users of the value box and learn from their experiences of transformation. So that's a that's an added advantage uh, that comes with it. For the certification program, the license pricing is for the bundle. And when, uh, when I say bundle, I mean the courseware, the assessments, and also the additional content that will be hosted on Dasa Hub uh, for that particular uh, courseware or the program. We have regional pricing for the, um, for the certification programs. And as I said earlier, you need, to, uh, you need the accreditation to run these courses. Now, moving on. Let's look at what are the next steps for this particular product suite. Um, we have the train the train uh, the train the trainer session for the certification program scheduled for second and fourth of July, and I'm hoping to see a lot of you there um, to become our accredited trainers. And then we launch the certification program in the second week of July. We will be uh, conducting the train the facilitator session for the value box in the last week of August. And then we will be launching the value box by early September. So those are the next steps for this particular product suite. Now let's move on and let's look at the questions some of you have and uh, give some time to the experts uh, to answer your questions. So. Let me see what are the questions that people have been asking. A lot, many I see here. Uh, I see some. Oh, there's so many good comments that I see. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. This is very encouraging. I, I, I also see a question coming in. Uh, about the size of the organization that's maybe even the easiest question here because uh the, the also from my personal experience i've implemented experience management now in large enterprises with a few thousand people or more but also with uh for instance some retail organizations with an it department of only 10 people so the, the, it's it's not to say that it's only valid for larger enterprises yes it is especially also looking at employee and, um, uh, for instance, developer experience. Uh, so if you have your developers in-house, uh, th th this is specifically also for them very relevant. On the other hand, if you deliver products or services, whether you're a small or a large organization, experience management is and should be an important topic. So it is really not very limited to organizational size, I would say. On Dave, I see a question uh, here. Uh, we don't have a concrete experience management practice in place yet. Where to start and proceed from there? Uh, Dave just talked about uh, where to start from. But Dave, uh, would you also want to uh, talk yeah, well, about? It, it's very easy. Huh? So you just start with the training, two-day program, and the value box. And th there's a lot of great, great products in there. <laughs> That's the easy question, uh, the easy answer. 
Um, but also, uh, this is also part of the two-day program and also part of those products in the value box uh, where we help to define experience indicators. So what is the experience that you want to achieve? And so first ask your question, what are your user needs, you know, uh, internal and external? And based on that, start, you know, developing the indicators for this. Based on those indicators, um, you should be able to actually start measuring. And then those results, the data that you start collecting, you inject it into your continuous improvement processes. And then you start up the feedback loops to the teams. So just starting by thinking about what is the experience that we want to start delivering and then building it in, start measuring, learning from it, and then improving from there. But that's that's my take. I'm not sure if uh, uh, Rob would like to add something to this, but for me, that would be a very important part to start with. Yeah, well said, Dave. <laughs> Uh, Rob, I think I have a very interesting question for you. It's mm -hmm. a question. How is DASA experience management related to UX, XLA, and value delivery in general? Um, I, th I think it has to do with um, in, traditionally uh, uh, IT companies uh, and, and DevOps uh, also. They're very much um, uh, focused on uh, technology, whether uh, products work from a technical perspective, whether it's been uh, programmed and delivered as, as, as per requested and designed. Uh, even when there's a UAT uh, testing, uh, that will be tested if, if everything works as expected. But um, what if the end user uh, who's involved in testing says, everything works perfectly, but I don't need it or, or doesn't help me to do my job better. So it's, it's not about the technicalities, it's about the perception of the user about the technicalities that you deliver. So we have to move away from the product and, and, and more focus on the experience of the end user about the product. So it's not about the output, what you deliver, it's about the outcome, the value of the end user of that output. Thanks. Yeah. There's another question which uh, asks, how are you supporting the workshops in the value box with slides, facilitator guide, or is there a recorded workshop? whiteboard templates or other materials available? I'll answer that. So yes, we do have slides and it is uh, very, um, um, uh, so the workshops we design are very, very flexible in the sense for usage. Uh, you can download these slides and edit it to the context in which you are delivering to your client's context, to your own organizational context. <clears throat> So there are slides that uh, you can also add some material from your end if you if there's a need to it, uh, knowing the context that in which you're delivering. So those slides are there. There is definitely definitely a facilitator guide uh, which will help you deliver the workshop. And uh, you attend the TTF sessions, whether uh, in a live mode or in the uh, as a flex, where the master trainers or the master facilitators are going to guide you on how to deliver the workshop. So there is a recorded version of that as well, which will be made, which will be made available to you on how to deliver those workshops. Um, and uh, uh, we are not, uh, uh, and there will be guidance in the facilitator guide or the facilitator book. Uh, on how to create these templates, the whiteboards, etc. If there is a need in the in that uh, workshop to have such a template, to have such a uh, whiteboard, so all of that support and material will be provided. Um, maybe I can respond to one of the other questions, which is from Falco. I see on LinkedIn. Uh, about the relation with the other products. So is it a standalone product or is it related to product management and portfolio management and the uh, DevOps fundamentals? Um, briefly, if, if you look at it, you know, th there's indeed a lot of relationships there because if you look at the relationship with portfolio management, for instance, um, uh, in the portfolio management training, we also talk about benefits tracking and also using experience data to do this. And we talk about value prioritization and also use desired experiences in all in order to actually you know give a good value prioritization up front uh, and it's also part of the value framework that we have created in in the portfolio management training with regard to product management 
In product management, of course, we talk a lot about UX and CX. Eh? So there's a very you know, a direct relationship with experience based on the product part of, of experience in user and customer. And for DOF as well. So if you look at the latest version of uh, DevOps Fundamentals version three, uh, we have integrated experience management as an explicit part of both the L and M in the comms. So we have used uh, the comms framework to set up um, the uh, DevOps Fundamentals 3. Uh, and both in the, uh, the way of working section, in the L, the lean uh, section, we have integrated experience management explicitly. And also uh, in the M part, in the measurement and metrics part, we also are talking about experience metrics already. So um, in those products, we have uh, already integrated experience as an important topic. And of course, in this product itself, we will also make the links to those um, uh, uh, to those uh, products as well. I also see a question from Mitchell. Uh, he's asking whether the TTT is uh, for three days. Uh, Mitchell, the uh, TTT uh, there is the first two days is delivering the certification program. So you'll, you'll be, the, uh, the complete certification program will be delivered as if you're the learner, the master trainers will be training you on the content. And then the third day will be the actual TTT where they walk you through on how to deliver the certification program uh, as a trainer. So that will comprise the three days for you. Um, there was one more question. Uh, I think I just lost it in the scroll. Just give me one sec. Oh, yes. Uh, Falco has asked whether this would be in English or other languages are also planned or available. Um, so we are launching the first. Uh, the first launch is in English. And then, of course, there are other languages planned. For example, it will be um, we will be certainly localizing it in Spanish, French, German, uh, Japanese. So those languages will definitely be doing it in. Uh, and as we get more uh, requirement from people on doing it in other languages, we will be doing it. So, but yes, the first launch in uh, July will be in English. And post that, the other languages will come. OK. Um... Just looking at if we have answered all the other questions. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It's nice to see the excitement. I think the first experience with this product is uh, good. Yes. So thank you all so much for being part of this webinar. And uh, for the comments that we have here, it, it is very, very encouraging. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Have a good day.